fount of thankfulness and praise, Jesus, Lord, to thee we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar, branch of royal David's stem, in thy birth at Bethlehem, and the Addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest at Jordan's stream, prophet, priest, and king supreme. And at Cain, a wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest. Manifest in power divine. Changing water into wine, and thumbs be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest in making all pulsed limbs and fainting soul. Manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might, manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill, and thumbs be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest on mountain height, shining in resplendent light, where disciples filled with awe, thy transfigured glory saw, when from there thou ledest them, steadfast to Jerusalem, cross and Easter day attest, God in man made man. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may be known to the ends of the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Let us confess our sin to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our brother, who is with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Second Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take 
your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us recite the psalm in unison. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from Mark. Jesus took with him Peter, and James and John, and led them up high a mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such that no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, amen. Master, it is so good to be here. Let us build three booths, one for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. How often we've heard this, and, and most of the time I've looked at this from this perspective, that Peter was just in awe and wasn't getting the message. But this year, this year in our COVID era, with the social unrest coming from in a sense, extremes, but from the suffering that we witnessed through George Floyd 
and then the uh, events on uh, January 6th in Washington, I think I see Peter's response to God's illuminating love on the mountaintop. I see, I see him as being willing to stay in place and experience the present moment. Now about building booths, that was a way of honoring things. And we do that, we build churches, we build monuments, we build super tall buildings, we put our names all over them. That's sort of a way of honoring things, but Peter's real action here is to honor the presence of God in that moment, in that time, and among them. Which is part of the reason why Jesus says on the way down, you know, just keep this to yourselves till after my resurrection. So strangely enough, while this is like the foreshadowing of Jesus' death, it's also the foreshadowing of the resurrection. And Jesus is inviting them to stay present so that they will know, as that comes to them, what God is doing. I'm not so sure if I can garner too many biblical scholars to go with me on this, but I really think, what we're, I, I really believe, more than think, I believe we're called to be present to this moment in our time, to the resurrection that is and that is happening that people are being vaccinated, and there are now quite a few in our congregation who have at least received their first shot, if not both, and, are f and, the, and the relief that's starting to happen among us. As a congregation, we may be able to regather soon. We will continue to be socially distanced, we will keep our attendance at a controlled level, and we'll wear masks, because that's the compassionate response as we still move forward. It's interesting what flu data we have out there, that flu is actually really suppressed this year, probably because of washing hands and distancing and masks. There are good things going on. There are a lot of good things that I'm hearing from people. But let us stay present to what the Spirit has been working with us in this time, that we may open ourselves to a new and a fresh call. Let us not lose what we've been taught in the wilderness of COVID, of being isolated. I claimed Epiphany as the come and see and here I am season. Let us come and see what God has been doing with us. I treasure the fact that I have my three adult children at home in a way we wouldn't ordinarily have when they're all college age. That's been a gift. I think they would think of that too, should ask them. But there have been good things that have happened and there have been insights that have been gained. And so here I am, let me bring those to the world. Here we are, we are changed and that is something we can bring to the world because that's what our call is, to go and make disciples. It's nice to gather and to pray together and rev each other up, but it's to go back and make disciples. And Jesus invited those three to see the wonder that God is doing, to hold on to that, that in the resurrection they could go and proclaim the living work of God. Glory to God in the highest and Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Seated at 
at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Transfigured God, you make us a part of your glorious revelation to the world so that we might shine in the darkest corners of all those we meet. We praise your name for the earth in its beauty. We praise your name for the wisdom and commitment of leaders. We praise your name for those with birthdays, Becky, Jim, Iona, and Jen, we praise your name. For those with anniversaries, Daryl and Dawn, and Beth and Tom, we praise your name. You are the source of solace in every need. For those who are sick or injured, Ryan, Judy, Bob, Beckett, Lars Jr., Gary, Carol, for Janet, Nancy, Mary, Susan, Cloyd, for Haley, Linda, Joe, Patty, Mark, Mary, Sheena, for Fritz, Jim, Jan, Sienna, Matthew, for Mitch, John, Daryl, Doug, Diane, Ann, Susie, Chris, Michelle, and David, and for all those in continuing care. Lord, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of all who suffer, especially for those throughout the world without access to health care, sanitation, or the ability to quarantine. Give peace and understanding between all people in every beloved race. Lead us to love all as you love all. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and those who mourn, we pray especially for the family of Patty Miller. Lord, hear our prayer. Give your grace to all we name before you. Lord, hear our prayer. Omnipotent, all-present, loving God, you show us the transfiguration as the light you offer the world. You illumine our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies to be a sign of your love for all people. Fill us with your life-giving spirit. Continue to pour that spirit into us that we may be a sign of your work, your sign of, a sign of your presence in this world, day and day and day. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for your continued support of our ministry here at Christ Church. I met with the commissioners last night 
and we walk through the works that have been going on. We've been doing a lot during COVID, and we've particularly had some really successful work in our outreach ministries, uh, and some of those have been radically changed. Uh, but we've been there, and we continue to be, and we will be more so as we go forward. I'll be working with the vestry, we're, and uh, we're uh, given our current planning cycle and the way we're working at it, I'm bringing the proposal of the budget to the vestry for the end of the month, and I'm couching it in a vision pass capacity. Where are we going? I'm not going to worry about what's been. We're going to talk about where we're going. So I hope you'll continue to support us, that we can continue to do the work of love, the radical work of dismantling old concepts of how things have to be to infuse them with the life-giving Spirit of God. And that is a part of our generous contributions here to support ourselves so we can keep doing that work in our neighborhoods. Thank you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray God's blessing. In the stillness of the night, in the watching for the dawn, in the being vigil of the evening, we await your presence to continue to enliven us and give us hope. Give us the gift of being present to one another, that we may, through our lives and our actions, show forth to the world the hope we have in you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Father, praise the Son, and 
Hallelujah. Let us go forth rejoicing safely and compassionately in the love of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>